is from Luke uh, chapter 1, 39 to 45, and this is partly of what Bill read earlier. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. And why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in, the, in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So today as we move forward in our series on coming home for Christmas, we will be talking about the blessing of home. Now when you think about home, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? Is it a place? A piece of land? Is it a house? Do you think about certain people when you think about home? Well, one way that I've kept track of where my home is can be found in the inside front cover of my Bible. You see, I still use the same Bible that I was given around the age of 12. And in this Bible, there are five different addresses written with my name at the top, and then five addresses. Mostly I had done this growing up because if you know me, you know that I have the ability to leave something lay and forget where it is. And so that way, when someone would find my Bible laying in the church, they would say, oh, this is Eric's, and this is where he's living now. So I would get it back. But each of these places that's written there is a place that I have called home throughout my life. And when I stop and reflect on them, I'm overcome with the memory of those places. That is the house that I grew up in. The next one is where I first lived when we moved to Lewistown. The next is where we lived when we were first married. The next when our, first, our second child was born. And finally culminating with where we are now. See, each of these places at one time was where I've called home. And how you think about your home and the blessings that you have received there can change over time as well. Now, if you'd have asked me if I considered 216 South Spruce Street in Lewistown to be my home when I was 14 years old after we had just moved there from Oklahoma, I probably would have tried to punch you just for asking me that question. You see, I was so upset about leaving where I had always known a home in Oklahoma to move to Pennsylvania that I couldn't have possibly have thought of that little place we were living at in Lewistown as being my home. But as I've grown older, I can look now and I can see the blessings that were there when we lived there. I can see how a family that was a small family became even closer because it was just the three of us. I can see the blessings of having adopted grandparents welcome us into their family and the blessings of a youth pastor who really set me on the course of wanting to serve God with my life. I think about our first home after being married and what it was like to live on Front Street in Sunbury. The constant traffic day and night. The kitchen that was slightly larger than a closet. And it was so small that you couldn't open the door to come into our house and have the refrigerator door at the same, open at the same time. You had to do one or the other. How it seemed like something needed fixed every other week in the house and the constant reminder that I am not good at fixing things. Or how a young couple just out of college and just married, it seemed like every bill that was due was going to be a struggle to pay. And I can also look at that home and think about how a young couple learned what it really meant to love one another. 
And I can think of the joy of bringing home our first child to that home. You see, often there are blessings at our home and we don't even know how big they are. Those blessings are for us until perhaps we've gone past that place. And our scripture for today is like that as well. You see, we find Elizabeth and Mary meeting while they are both pregnant. Elizabeth with John and Mary, of course, with Jesus. Now, in case you don't know the whole story, let me give you a little bit more background on it. You see, Elizabeth was well past the age of having children, and she was thought to be barren. However, God had another plan. He was going to bless her with a son. And it was so unbelievable that she would have a child at that age that when God sent Gabriel to tell Zachariah, her husband, that Elizabeth was going to conceive a child, he answered the angel saying, there is no possible way that is going to happen. We are just way too old for that. And his reward for doubting the word of God was he was unable to speak until that child was born. Now Mary was also visited by Gabriel and told how she would be blessed to be the mother of Christ. And when she came to Elizabeth, this is where we find our scripture for today. John leaped for joy in his mother's womb. And Elizabeth knows right away that Mary has been blessed by God, that she is favored among women. Now they were faithful to God, and they believed in what they had been told about these children that were growing, especially Christ in Mary's womb. But perhaps they didn't realize how much of a blessing he would be to all of us. You see, because of the faithfulness of these two women, because of the love that they had for God, they have been a part in blessing us with a home. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor, are you okay? Because that's a weird sentence that you just said. And it does sound like a weird sentence. What do you mean they blessed us with a home because of their love and faithfulness to God? Well, let me explain. Because of the faithfulness of Elizabeth, John was born and prepared the way for Jesus. Because of the love of Mary, Christ was born. And since Christ was born, died, and was resurrected, those that believe in him are blessed with a home with God. So you see, the love of God and faithfulness that Mary had has given us all a home. Now when we think about home, it is not always an easy thing for all of us. You see, I pray that your home, no matter where it has been, has always been a happy one. That there are only great memories when you pause to think about them. And it is my prayer that you've only known that blessing of your home. But I am guessing that there have been hard times in those homes as well. Earlier in our series for this uh, Advent season, we talked about the fear of coming home and how it's difficult for some people. And how sometimes it feels like it might be the last place that you want to be. But the good news is this, brothers and sisters. Even if the home that you grow up in holds nothing but bad memories, God has a home for us if we believe. A home that will hold nothing but hope, peace, joy, and love for all eternity. Indeed, Jesus tells us in John chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. So when I think about this blessing of home and the fact that Jesus is going to take us to be in his Father's house... I'm always reminded of an old hymn that we would sing in the church I grew up in. And it goes like this. And I'm going to need you to forgive me here if my southern twang comes through. But the way that it goes into my head is always the way that I heard it as a child. So the starting of the hymn is this. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. You see, the homes of this world are temporary. They are like a vapor in the wind. But the home that Jesus is going to prepare for us and those that follow him, that is a home for eternity. 
This is something that I've always taken great comfort in, knowing that in this life there will be hardship, but through the love that Christ has for us, we will always have a home with him. And now you may be saying, yes, that is excellent, Pastor. I cannot wait to be in that home with Christ. But what do we do in the meantime? Do we simply do nothing because, as you said, our lives are like a vapor in the wind? No, that is not what we do. You see, we are called now, in this life, to share the love with Jesus Christ of all that we meet. And in this case, that means providing a spiritual home to everyone. We have a responsibility to take that message that Jesus was born, died, and was resurrected for all to everyone that we meet so that they may have a spiritual home on this earth. Wouldn't it be lovely if we were constantly saying to ourselves, we need to add another room onto this church because we just have too many people for the way it is now. See, that is what we are called to be doing. Making this church a place that is a home for all that are lost, all that are hurt, all that are broken, and all that are seeking. So, in hopes that we are doing so, we will begin to bless other people's homes, and more importantly, that we will be able to help them find a home in heaven with God. So I challenge you this week to share the blessing that Jesus Christ has given to you with just one other person. Amen.